here's my normal setup. The MRI scan is on the monitor. My scrub tech has this equipment that they're opening now. I come over to anesthesia here and I set the alarm for the blood pressure. High limit of 110 millimeters of mercury. That way the alarm starts going off as soon as the pressure starts trending up. My anesthesiologist sometimes don't like this, but they suffer with it. Then I'm gonna come over here to the patient here. I've got this set up so I can do an ultrasound guided rectus spina process block. We're gonna start at the three, four level today. So we're gonna drop a needle right there on the three, four facet complex. Here's our needle coming down on the three, four facet complex that we can visualize back and forth on the lumbar spine. We'll get a little tumescence in the tissue and some anesthetic effect here by putting in 30 cc's of ropivacaine. I'm currently using a gravity based um, setup. So those bags will go up another couple feet and I'm using an NSK drill, which boxes right there. Okay, so for a standard stenosis operation, here's a couple of key ingredients. Fred, so that the optics can be cleared and you can slow down the process of fogging of the lenses. Um, this is a Arthrex passport that we're gonna put on the back of the 10 millimeter scope here. And we're gonna tie on in a minute. I'm gonna show you that, um, I'm gonna show you that knot. And then the reason why we're using a 10 millimeter scope is that it gives us the ability to use this five millimeter burr, which is substantially more aggressive than the 3.5 or the four and makes it much more easy to remove significant bone stock. And more importantly, it gives us the opportunity of using um, the six millimeter kerosene, which is the large format kerosene, plus the curved four, which gives us the ability to reach underneath the lamina and remove the ligamentum flavum. It doesn't seem like it's that much of a difference between the four and the six, but in terms of efficiency of removal of tissue, this six millimeter is dramatically um, much more of an aggressive and um, aggressive tool for removing bulk ligamentum flavum. Okay, so for this constrictor knot, we're gonna make a figure eight. This is also known as a clove hitch. And we're gonna put the second loop of the figure eight behind the first. We're gonna grab those three strands together like this, flip this over the top, and then Nick is gonna help me pull this down. And we're going to make sure that it goes below the threads here so that when this pulls tight like that it gives us this beautiful cinch here where this will not come off which gives us a significant amount more pressure actually at the operative site let's trim that nick and now we're ready to start okay and now we have essentially what's called a semi-closed system so if we insert a relatively small diameter tube here into the passport, the fluid will bubble around that. We can also control the fluid here by turning this stopcock over on this side on and off. But this is only a one millimeter port. So this will plug frequently, which is why you need a 20 cc syringe here on the table in order to be able to clear this so that when you're drilling, you can clear the debris that accumulates in that one millimeter port. I found that this gives me a much greater degree of hemostasis because it increases the pressure in the wound like this and the vast majority of my cases generally have no significant blood loss. With our hands in the vertical position, we are at the cranial limit of the drilling required to remove the ligamentum flavum. And then as we take our hands and wand them towards the patient's feet, we can both palpate and visualize with the grasper the inferior lamina, which is down here. So here's the inferior lamina, I'm tapping on the bone there. This is the condensation of fibers here that goes from the ligamentum flavum into the facet joint. This is the lateral recess here. This is the leading edge of the lamina coming around to the junction between the lamina and the spinous process. And then the interspinous ligament is just up here and then becoming the inferior lamina here. So now we're ready to start drilling. After the initial set of drilling here, we can now visualize the ligamentum flavum. We can appreciate the midline rafe there in the center and the contrib contribution of the spinous process, the interspinous ligament from on top. And we just need to complete this drilling all the way to the peripheral attachments of the ligamentum flavum in order to be able to remove it in block. So there's our midline raffe that we can see pulsating back and forth. And we're gonna insert the drill here and we're gonna work to the point where we get to the peripheral attachments here. Show that part where we plunge in. And so there we've released the ligament and flavum all the way at the top. And you do this to the same up to the side here. 